coming to you from State of Emergency in Southern British Columbia. I'm in Vancouver. Uh, my previous uh, two videos, but especially the one uh, just describing the situation here, it's worthwhile to have a look at that in terms of what's happening with the lumber um, production and uh, delivery, which we kind of don't know yet, but we'll find out. We've got another uh, torrential, uh, sorry, atmospheric river coming uh, over the next few days um, in the next week. Uh, so, but for now, I'm going to talk about the Western Wood Products Association, uh, the latest data on uh, Canada and US uh, lumber production volumes and sawmill capacity utilization rates, which is till August. So that data, there's quite a bit of a lag. Uh, but I will be talking about what happened uh, from January to August of this year and comparing to the same time one year ago so that people can get an idea of what's uh, the situation for the forest products, what's going to happen um, for the rest of this year, and obviously um, how that's going to impact U.S. housing and building and construction to the end of this year and at the beginning of next year for January 2022. I'll be uh, putting that um, manufacturing and sawmill capacity data against my lumber prices, which come out every week for that week and are really an on-time indicator um, as to let people know um, what's happening with the lumber market, you know, actually right now. So let's have a look at the charts and I'll explain where we're at. Okay, so here we have uh, lumber production. Uh, USA is the green line and Canada is the red line. It's August 2020 to August of 2021. The great volatility of last year has been worked out and it's looking quite a bit more normal in terms of the seasonal activity. You can see there both countries pop up in the spring, March, and sort of toddle along, maybe diminishing slightly in Canada over the summer and then at the end of the summer in August dropping, that's completely normal. So from January to August of 2021, U.S. lumber production increased by 3.3% to 25,341,000,000 board feet, compared to 2020 when it was 24,529,000,000. Comparing August to July in the U.S., it's pretty much flat. And also comparing August to August of 2020, just the month of August, again, it's pretty flat. In Canada, for January to August 2021, production was up 8.2% to 16 billion board feet from almost 15 billion in uh, the first eight months of 2020. And British Columbia alone, which as we know is 50% of Canadian production, it's up 12.5% for January to August of 2020 to 6,445 million board feet from 5,731 million board feet. This is an excellent graph. Again, it comes out of the Western Wood Products Association, a publication called Lumber Track. Capacity, capacity utilization rates, very important information. Once again, the US is the green line, Canada is the red line. You can see just there in, uh, toward the end of last year in November, 2020, the two countries were approximately at the same rate. Very good for Canada, normal, above 90%. Quite high for the US, again, above 90%. As I said before, there's a lot of smaller family-owned underinvested sawmills in the US, whereas in Canada, they're um, much more uh, optimized since you know the 2000s and really are um, normal to run above 90%. So this drop that we have in July and August is not great um, for January to August of 2021 the US was running at 86 percent capacity and Canada was running at 81 which is low but in 2020 it was 76 percent which is like horrifyingly low and very glad to see the recovery coming along here we have my lumber prices the benchmark Western Spruce Pine Fir KD 2x4 number 2 and better for mid-November. 2021 is the blue line. Very interesting that at this point of the year is pretty much the same price that it was one year ago, which is the yellow line. The red line is uh, 2019 and it just looks completely flat due to this incredible volatility that we had 
especially in the spring of this year. As I said before, that high, high price of just around 1600 very small volumes of wood were sold at that rate. Um, that is the price, but it was a lot of people held off and waited to buy. As you can see, that line, the blue line crashing down to uh, a little bit more of a normal level. This is the table that I show on my website. Um, I put that up with a bit of a lag two weeks after the subscribers get to see it. Uh, the top line is that Western Spruce uh, graph that I was just showing you. You can see where it is now compared to uh, the previous week and the previous month. The second price is Southern Yellow Pine 2x4 and the third price is Eastern Spruce 2x4. Like I said before, those three are interchangeable. They all meet the building code and customers can switch between if they don't like the price, um, they'll try a different region. Then it's studs. That's a specialty sawmill. Below that, Douglas fir green, also a specialty, highly valued by architects on the eastern seaboard. And then your plywood. Can't build a house without ply plywood. Or okay, great. And so that's um, the situation as we know it um, for the end of this summer. And the data for the rest of this year, you know, it'll come out in a few months, right? So we'll find out like November and December, more closer to like April of 2022. Uh, but all of this uh, lag uh, for the Western Wood Products Association, which is a wonderful publication, Lumber Track, uh, can, you can help yourself to find out what's happening in the lumber market right now by subscribing to Madison's on the dashboard. And you can see the data on Friday for that week. So we publish every week for that week and the 450 individual lumber and panel commodity prices can tell you what's happening with demand for wood which uh, a huge amount of that goes into u.s housing so it can tell you a good idea of what the situation for home building is in the u.s you know sort of at that time on that week we also um, provide commentary to explain what's happening with the market, whether it's the sawmill order files or inventory of logs, inventory of manufactured wood, supply chain issues, which right now BC is really completely messed up and we actually don't even know when the railways will be fixed and when the highways will be fixed. Um, the two main highways are gonna be closed through this winter. Right now, the Port of Vancouver is closed because the rail line can't come in. The Port of Vancouver is the third largest by volume port in North America. Port of Prince Rupert, which is very far north, it's just south of Alaska, is running, is open, uh, and it's possible for the sawmills in the interior, like Prince George area, to divert their deliveries to Rupert and then to come south, I don't know, California. But as everyone knows, the um, Cargo issues have been terrible with ships uh, waiting for a berth, uh, waiting for a long time to unload all up and down both coasts of North America. So that Rupert can at least help move wood, but it we don't know if that's going to actually bring it to market. Uh, so that's it for now. Subscribe here to my YouTube. Go to my website, madisonsreport.com. Along the top, there's a menu. Click subscribe. Fill out a form and uh, get a sample of the full uh, price list, 450 individual lumber and panel commodities, and sign up. Sign up to have access to the dashboard and see what's happening with the market and get our uh, commentary of the dynamics every week on Friday.